Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thanks for joining us. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Rates of childhood overweight and obesity are rising. According to the World Health Organization, worldwide obesity has nearly tripled since 1975. From 1975 to 2016, the prevalence of overweight or obese children and adolescents aged 5 to 19 years increased more than fourfold from 4% 4 to 18% globally. 39 million children under the age of five were overweight or obese in 2020. Overweight and obesity are defined as abnormal or excessive fat accumulation that presents a risk to health. It's being too big for weight and height. One is considered a problem only in high income countries. Overweight and obesity are now dramatically on the rise in low- and middle-income countries, particularly in urban settings. Childhood obesity can lead to diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol. There may be no symptoms other than weight that's above normal. I'm being joined by a board-certified lifestyle medicine physician, a UK-certified weight loss coach and nutritionist, founder of Ariela Health and Fitness, Dr. Chinasa Amadi. You're welcome to this show, Dr. Chinasa. Thank you so much for having me again. <laughs> Let's first know, how do you identify that a person's weight is too much for his or her height? What's the standard? Because some people will say, no, I'm not fat, I'm not obese. They don't know what they're talking about. That's for children now. Yeah, for or children, generally. Generally, generally um, usually we use the, use, there's the body mass index, which is distorted because it doesn't, um, it's, it's ha it doesn't accommodate the black people well. Thank you. Yes. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I should hold on a bit. Hold on. <laughs> However, we have what we call the waist-hip ratio, okay. or even the waist circumference. Studies have shown that these are higher indicators for... Um, you know, onset of chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes, high, okay. um, high blood pressure and stuff. So this is saying that uh, the waistline of a female should not be more than 35 inches. Okay. At the level All of around. the navel, yes. Okay. And the male should not be uh, more than, it shouldn't be more than 40 for males, shouldn't be more than 35 for females. Okay. Then the waist to hip ratio compares the waist to hip, you know, the ratio between the waist and the hip. So it's, those are standards for children. They are, you know, when you go visit the pediatrician, there's a particular age to wait at each stage. So you, you can obviously tell when your child is overweight and you, just a simple visit. So even by looking at the child, you'll be able to know, hey, is this child obese or overweight or not? Many moms, you know, attest to this. They say that their children are quite big, you know, uh, in infancy, maybe four months, five months. They're really browned and everything, and they think it's real good, you know, and that they call it baby fat, puppy fat, and it's going to go. It usually goes when the child starts to get older, yeah. and they say, oh, he's just going to use it to grow Close taller. Yes. Does that make sense? Is it true? <laughs> So those are, you know, part of the things that cause the, that increase obesity, childhood obesity, especially in our environment, is our cultural mindset. Mm. You know, we like, uh, you know, the plumpy, full yeah. child. Even we, so most times we want even a child of five, year, five years to still be plump, you know. If your child is thin, it's like, why is this child, my, this child healthier looking? We associate the size of the child, the health. the health of the child. And that is the problem. So it's important, there has to be a re, 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 reconstruction of the mindset, you know, in, especially in mothers, that, hey, your child being overweight or being obese does not mean that your child is automatically healthy. And your child being slim does not mean your child is not healthy. Mm -hmm. So we should stop associating being overweight, being obese with, um, with health. That's where the problem is. So that, well, that's why we have that mindset. Oh, don't worry, he'll use, he'll, the child will use it to grow to tall. Grow tall Studies yeah. are showing now that a child at six years old that is obese has 60 to 70% chance of being obese as an adult. Whoa. Yes. That's bad. That's bad. So, yeah. you see, we, we gradually start conditioning these children for problem in the, future. in the future. And there has been extensive studies on the, like, linking 
obesity and type 2 diabetes. So, you know, we don't call it any more juvenile diabetes and, you know, yeah, adult. It's no type because two. it's just type 2. It's no more juvenile. Because of, of or it's no more adult because even the, the teenagers are coming down with it. And there is clear evidence studies showing that the link between obesity and this onset of type 2 diabetes. So, you, you as the parent, you have to ask yourself, are you, condi are you preparing your children for a problematic future? Is it only food? that makes people obese because the idea is that oh you're eating too much but some people say i don't really eat that much the child doesn't really eat that much he's just like that does that happen so um obesity is multifactorial the causes are different factors it could be um it could be lifestyle it could be medication. It could be certain health conditions. It okay, could... these are the risk factors. Now. No, these are things that, yeah, that could cause the child to be obese. So it's not always food. It may not be always food. However, it's a greater percentage on the lifestyle. So both lifestyle now is both food, physical activity, you know, are they, is the child moving or not, and how much is the child eating? So you see, most parents will say, oh, my child doesn't eat much. However, if you analyze everything the child eats, maybe the child had, the, oh, the child didn't eat food proper, like maybe rice and beans, or they have the yeah, ice cream, but the child had it. Yes, all those pick, or picking other, oh, he just likes to take some juice. Oh, he just wants to eat biscuits. Oh, he just wants to eat puff puff. That is it. So we keep, we don't identify these other things as food. And these are the things that even cause more hazard, the hazard. It, like, if the child eats food and is full, you'll see the child will almost not pick on these other things. That is true. And, and I've noticed that if you give children sweets before food, they tend not to have an appetite for the food. Naturally, when you see heaven, you don't want to see heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. Okay, so some people say their weight is caused by other conditions, like, uh, and, and, you know, they cannot help how big they are. You know, some, some things, some medical conditions. Is this true? And are they, you know, what yeah, are some if, of these yeah, conditions? Uh, well, it could be, it could, yeah, different medical conditions. It could be like in uh, older, children, older people like PCOS or, you know, certain adrenal disorders. Some really young people, they say they have uh, polycystic ovarian PCOS. syndrome. Something, okay, that's what you yes. just mentioned. Yes. Uh, and so. they are kids. So if they, now, they, when, when, when a Nigerian tells me that, I ask, have you gone for a diagnosis? Did you see a specialist? You mean they say those things Some, without oh, diagnosis? They Google it and they diagnose themselves. Yes, yes, oh, wow. they do. Oh, yes, they do. So have you seen a specialist? If you think you have PCO, have you seen a gynecologist or an uh, OBGYN? Have you even seen your general practitioner first? So most times we go on Google and then we come up, oh, these are the symptoms, this, this, this. Oh, this is what I have. Okay. And then you start, your mind starts telling well, you this is what that's you have. really dangerous. Oh, it's, oh, it's dangerous. Because Google can tell you you have oh. cancer. <laughs> oh, yes. True. <laughs> Very true. So most people do that. Most people do not see specialists to actually come up with proper diagnosis. They won't even do the investigations that were recommended. Hey, do this test. Let's see. Is it actually this? Or do this and do this. Let's see. They're not ready to do all that. But is it true, though, that such a condition It's possible, yes. Cause... Yes, it's possible. Okay. It's possible. It's just like it, the, the issue is that you have to work extra hard. It's not impossible mm. to lose weight. It's just that you have to work extra hard. And so it does, different people have it different ways, yeah? Some people have it easier to lose some weight. Some people have it harder. So this is just you have to do extra work. But if there's a medical condition, first address the medical condition. Then that other thing will follow. Because if, the, if the, what is causing it is not addressed, it's pretty much uh, like a futile attempt. Yeah. You, you have said that, uh, you know, obesity can cause um, type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. How, what's the connection? <sighs> so, uh, just not to sound too medical, it's, it's um, the, 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 the studies are extensive. You know, the thing is that over time, these studies are evolving. And you know the recent, uh, recent the recent studies show that one in ten children born after the year 2000 would develop type 2 diabetes, and this was strongly linked to the onset of obesity in children. So there is a strong link between high blood pressure and obesity, between type 2 diabetes and obesity, between certain cancers like um, colon cancer 
and obesity. Some studies have said there is so, even some relationship between breast cancer, prostate cancer, and obesity. That does it. It's bad. It's bad, yes. So you see, that I, I tell people, just you don't want to be part of the statistics. Just um, do your best. Live intentionally. That's why lifestyle is a, lifestyle is a key factor in, you know, in coming, like, not having these adverse effects of obesity. And so it seems to, it seems to me that we have to be very deliberate, mm -hmm. not just on a, an individual level, but on a country level, because we're, we seem to be adopting lifestyles that give us problems. So we have two problems. There's the, the problem of being underweight, and there's the problem of being overweight, which are both malnutrition. Why don't we face one? <laughs> and say know. Africa is burden is has a double burden of disease both from undernutrition and overnutrition. Right. Yes. Well, um it's 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 a struggle, but the thing is first of all we start with the smallest unit you can start with is your family. So before we start thinking of changing how the country thinks, if you change your family, your immediate family, your immediate family changes your extended family, gradually your community will change their mindset. So it starts with, first of all, most people are adopting healthy lifestyle without involving their families. Okay. Your spouse is not on, in the, on the journey with you. Your children are on their own. Then only that makes more, it more difficult. That makes, who, who, what impact are you making? Yeah, it will be hard. Because, and the truth is, especially on, in children, children learn from what they see. So children learn more from your, the parents. As a parent, you can't be having your shawarma soda, sitting down, enjoying yourself, and then you give your child a cucumber. It doesn't work. Mommy so, is wicked. <laughs> of course. Both mommy and daddy, they will say, are wicked. And you know, the thing is, if one person is now giving them cucumbers, and they're or eating cucumbers, and the other one is not eating, uh, that person is the fond parent. The one, okay, yes, yes. the one that's giving them what they want. So it has to be, uh, the, you have to, first of all, fix the smallest unit of the whole community, which is the family. And then gradually, they start, yeah, you know, you start influencing. You can only influence when you've influenced your, you know, your smallest unit. So doctors say that the journey starts from when the woman is actually pregnant with that child. Take us through what she can do. <sighs> when she's pregnant with that child, the first thing I tell people is don't eat for two. Okay? That's the first cultural mishap. You know, oh, my child wants to take soda, chilled one. Oh, my child, the child in the, <laughs> oh, yeah. Ah, my child, ah, it's hot, puff, puff, the one at the junction. That's what my baby said. Now, okay. how did you, how did baby say that? You know, that's the first thing we have to, we have to <laughs> debunk that mindset. And it's, unfortunately, so ingrained because um, parents tell us to eat for two, you know, and we're not eating. They'll say, oh, you cannot diet when you're pregnant. But it's not that, about that's dieting. What they say. No, it's not about dieting. Wait, let, let me pause you there. <laughs> we'll go on a break. When we come back, we'll continue <laughs> from where we stop. Please stay with us. We're going on a short break, and we're back in a while. Welcome back. We're talking about childhood obesity with Dr. Kinasa and Madi. You can send email, moalale at channelstv.com is the email address. And you can tweet at ctv underscore Mary A with your questions and your comments. You were talking about how we keep a child from being obese right from when the mother yeah. is pregnant. Yeah, so, so she shouldn't eat for two. Yes, yeah, she shouldn't eat for two. She should be intentional. So it's not about dieting. It's just about being intentional with what she's eating. She needs to eat healthy food. And the first step is eating whole foods. You know, you have your rice, your beans, your soups, your swallow. You, you have to almost um, condition, tell yourself that on this pregnancy, I'm going to try my best. It's very hard because the hormones are raging at that point. But it takes... Um, Sometimes you're so hungry. Yeah. <laughs> when you're hungry, what do you do? You grab food. That's what you do. That's what you should do. Eat food. Okay. You can have your rice and beans. You could have your... So it's yard. not a matter of depriving yourself. No, 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 no. Nobody says deprive. But when you're hungry, eat food. If you want to have some fruits, have fruits. 
if you want to have some vegetable sauce, have some vegetable, lick your effort. I, I get what you're saying. Uh -huh. Don't take don't take rubbish and call it food. Food, yes, that is it. <laughs> that is it. So that's that's the thing. We we we, are, we surround ourselves with other things. Oh, um, I have cravings, so it's changing, it's this, it's, you know, the wrongest things. And it starts from, it really starts from inside, you know, where, because you have that mindset of um, that, that you, 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 this thing, other food, these things are food, so it won't be bad for you to give it to your child. Mm -hmm. That's how you condition, you understand? I've seen someone that is winning their children with instant noodles. So that's, your child is moving from... Uh, <laughs> from liquid to semi-solids and is into instant noodles. A yes. lot of mothers do a that. Lot of, it's a staple diet right now. A lot Nigeria. of it's mothers a, it's, do that. It's a staple diet and that is, that's the beginning of our problem because you start conditioning these children with a particular taste board. Yes, and they, they start craving. That is the, the kind of food they crave. So when you give them <laughs> rice and beans or you give them uh, potato porridge, it tastes terrible in their mouth because what these other processed foods do is to make your taste bud to, you they know, condition, condition your tongue yes, to something to that. Yes. Just that. a moment. Let me quickly give the number. You may call us on 0808-054-2233 also with your questions. So we were on a roll here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the thing. It's important once the mother is eating healthy, that you, of course you have a healthy child, you don't have any risk of having an, you know, giving birth to an overweight baby, first of all. You want that, your, your baby to be within the, you know, the, you know, the estimated weight, birth weight, you know. And also it will even help the progressing of your labor. It, it's, it's, the benefits are over, as in they are, they are bound. The benefits are bound. We just need to realize that there, there is benefit in eating real food. How does exercise fit, fit into all this? First of all, for children, children need to exercise. The physical activity guidelines states that children should embark at up to the age of 17 every day aerobic activity of 60 minutes. But how many children are playing now? Unfortunately, the insecurity doesn't help much. Because they say, oh, it's dangerous out there. They Don't can go out play there. in their houses. They can play. Allow them to play in their. Allow them to play in their room. When they finish catching it, they will arrange it back. But now we don't want them to play. We want them to hold their laptops. We want them to hold their tabs. And you see, even when they're in school, how many schools actually have playground spaces right they now? They buildings in Yes, there. it's all buildings. There are no, no sports activity anymore. They are now more computer or learning how to knit. Sitting down, where, they were encouraging the sedentary lifestyle. And there's something we call the sitting disease. And that we start conditioning these children to sit. A child is watching cartoons straight for two hours. Wow. That is the problem. So physical activity, the need to move. 60 minutes every day of active play is recommended. And of course, in adult, adulthood, usually when they adopt this playing habit, they take it to adulthood. Yes? Or, and even adults are women to be moving more. At least walking. At least, walking is exercise. The issue is we're thinking high fallow thing. We think we need to go to the gym. We need to wear these nice dresses, sportswear. I have to take a selfie for the gram. I have to maybe just, you just run somewhere and then take a selfie and that's it. And you know, just any small breakout of sweat, use that opportunity to cap, catch a sweat. Sweating it out. Sweat, I'm sweating it out. <laughs> we don't need to do all that. Just focus, do something, exercise. And um, for children, 60 minutes. For adults, it's recommended 150 minutes a week of moderate intensity So adults exercise. are doing much less than children. Actually, children need to run around a lot, more, right? Yes, for their development. It is recommended. That's the guidelines recommended. I hear it's good for the heart. Very good for the heart. It helps with, it even helps with this condition, this epidemic now, this obesity overweight epidemic. Okay. Very important. But it's important not to miss the fact of, you know, some, some parents will say, oh, don't worry, when, when you eat it, we play it out. We shouldn't, we shouldn't okay. make, miss that. You don't keep f f putting in bad fuel and expect the car to function optimally. So give him wholesome food. Give him good food. And let him move. And allow him move well. They talk about, you experts talk about um, micronutrient deficiencies and minerals. If somebody is eating the regular whole foods, does it give these things or, or you know, must something else be added to the food? 
if you're eating real food, you're having your your main food. What you call whole foods. Whole foods, yes. When you have, and uh, for, just in case you don't know what whole foods are, potatoes, your yams, your, you know, foods that are coming from the ground, yes? With in your their natural in their state. natural state. With your vegetables. You're doing your vegetables every day. You're doing your not fruits every day. Of course. Of course. <laughs> ah, we like to overcook. No, not that one. Not Nigerian version of vegetable soup. Nah. So when we, you know, with your vegetables, with your fruits every day, then you'll be getting the, you, your, the nutrient overload, literally. But what we, the food industry already knows how to get us. They give you a food and they put, oh, rich in calcium, oh, rich in vitamin A, rich in vitamin C, and we're falling for all that. Hey, why don't you eat your, your, okay, rich in vitamin C, why don't you eat your fruits? Oh, before you say fruits, fruits are expensive, you can get at least three fruits, three oranges for 100 naira. Okay, let's, uh, <laughs> let's find out what John is uh, going to ask us. Hello, John. Hello. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, John. What's your question? My question is, where, what are Go the ahead, go ahead. You mark a X. To, to prevent obesity of the, of the baby. Sorry, you're going to have to start again. I didn't get the first part. I said, when a woman when a woman is pregnant, what are those healthy foods she can eat in order to prevent the obesity? The child from getting obese, I, I guess you're trying to say. Okay, John, thank you very much. Doctor will handle that. He says when a woman is pregnant, what exactly should she be taking? So, one thing she should have constant every day in her food, in her diet every day, is uh, fruits and vegetables. Okay. So, you find when she automatically eats more fruits and vegetables, you'll find out that she will um, eat less, she will be craving less of other things. Nature conditions your taste buds. So is that right? Yes, it does. So, you won't really want those sweets? You won't, no, you won't want to. You won't okay. want it because every other thing will be, will be tasting really crazy, like to be like, oh, what, what did I just eat, yes? Okay. So that is the first thing, have fruits and vegetables every day. Then have, if she wants to eat food, she should eat proper food. She should make her rice with beans, make her soup, make her have a core. Regular more, more, sizes. Regular sizes, of course. She's not, be, no eating <laughs> like a good No eating for two. No eating for there, two. There's no eating for two because just eat for what you should. Don't eat with the mindset of, you know, part of the part of the things that the blue zones, blue zones are people that they've seen they live longer in the world. Okay. One of the things, the habits they have is that they stop eating once they're 80% full. Ah, I see. That's one of their habits. So, but we tend to eat until your, the food is like here. It's almost And you don't want to drink mouth. water anymore because it's like if you drink water, it will now come out. You know that kind of thing. So, it's important so that there's a control, self-control. Yes, self-control. So, you keep telling yourself. But fruits and vegetables should feature every day. That will give the baby all the nutrients the baby actually needs. Then with your, of course, your carbohydrate makes some of your protein, you know, just mix it in that way. But whole foods. Okay, so we've got to go, but tell us in 30 seconds sleep does it help ah sleep is very important 30 seconds okay in 30 <laughs> seconds okay <laughs> it's important to get a minimum of six to nine hours of sleep every for a day child. yes for a child minimum okay. try that try and then try not to feed the child just before the child goes to bed so that the child gets rested sleep thank you very much <laughs> dr amadi wonderful having you on the show thank you so much thank you john for calling and all others have a wonderful day. I am Mary Alale Yusuf.